LSU typically has as much talent as anybody in the nation. Of course, that's going to get tested here in 2020 with a load of talent, probably as much, if not more, than anybody in the country departing to the NFL draft. And now Jamar Chase is, of course, announced that he is opting out for this fall. We got uh, Carter Bryant on the line. You can catch him right here on YouTube on Power Hour and uh, works for Chat Sports as well. Carter, I appreciate you uh, taking the time today. How's it going? Man, it's great. You know, it's weird how much has changed in our world, Mark. And this is the first year in college football where we're in this player empowerment era. And the coaches that pivot the fastest are the ones that are going to be able to adjust to everything we're going through. Not only just players deciding to not play this year, but also on top of that, how are the players, how are the coaches going to deal with COVID? How are the coaches going to deal with uh, you know, player uprising movement. So I'm actually fascinated by it, but, you know, thanks for having me, man. I, I've seen you on YouTube everywhere, and I'm excited to share this wonderful LSU knowledge with your audience, man. Let's go. Let's go. You came highly recommended. I told you that. So anytime any viewer, and so listen, everybody watching, anytime you give me a recommendation or a lot of people will say, you don't cover enough of this team or that team or whatever, or I'd love to see you have this person on. If you give me a name and want me to have somebody on, I track them down. And so we appreciate having Carter here to talk up the Bayou Bengals. Before we get to 2020, hey, national championships are hard to come by. So let's reverse just a year because you still have to be, to a certain extent, riding high off what was one of the most incredible college football performances from an offense, from a team in dominant fashion against a killer schedule And again, dominating on through the college football national championship game. It was just a storybook year. Such a difficult schedule, Mark. And on top of that, you had the greatest college football quarterback of all time in Joe Burrow. And we can have the debate Joe Burrow versus Tim Tebow versus Cam Newton. But Joe Burrow threw for 278 yards and five touchdowns against Georgia Southern in the first week. And those 278 yards were the fewest yards he would throw in a game all year. I I think, you know, we we talk so much about Joe Burrow, but we don't talk about so many other aspects of his game. You know, he's one of the most efficient running quarterbacks we've ever seen. He's also, uh, to me, you know, when you, you consider the murderer's row of a schedule, he didn't play a bad game. Like, that is so hard at this collegiate level with all these talented defensive coordinators to not go out there and, and play a bad game the same year that Dave Aranda LSU's defensive coordinator had his worst year in Baton Rouge. The fact that he was able to do that uh, is what ultimately prepared and, and really pushed LSU forward. And now the question Mark is, will LSU get it done post Joe Burrow. And obviously a lot of that falls on Ed Orgeron's shoulders. The good news though, is that the recruiting at LSU as crazy as this sounds has actually gotten better. So at the very least LSU will be back in a college football playoff within the next two or three years. Yeah. People are curious about the post to Joe Burrow combined with the post Joe Brady moving on to the Carolina Panthers and him being the mastermind with uh, Steve Ensminger in building what has become the most prolific offense in college football, I believe 726 points scored last year. And again, not taking on FCS teams and group of five teams every week, taking on a killer SEC schedule, tack on Texas, Oklahoma, Clemson, and a date against Georgia, obviously added on in the SEC championship game you're talking just prolific stuff. So no Brady, no Burrow, now no Jamar Chase, which I would have possibly made the comment, Carter, before Chase left, that it seems incredible that the pipeline of talent is so good that you lose Justin Jefferson and the wide receiver core may have actually been as good coming into this season with Jamar Chase, but now you lose another 20 touchdowns and 84 catches. Yeah, it's crazy. I I was looking this up. You know, Jamar Chase had as many touchdowns in one year that Amari Cooper had in his final two years of Alabama. And we all remember Amari Cooper, probably the the best SEC receiver pre-Jamar Chase, him or Julio Jones. So uh, it's it's crazy. You know, you, you lose Jamar Chase. But 
uh, I've done a few videos on this topic, Mark. I think college football, and I know this is a, a little bit of a side subject, but I, I know your audience loves diehard college football talk. I believe college football would be better off if they allowed players to leave after their sophomore or redshirt freshman year. And before people go crazy, okay, I, I want I want people to hear me out. You know, upcoming, you know, the college NIL is coming up, right? You know, players being able to market off their own image, and we can have a discussion about that a different day. But, you know, the players that would actually sign huge endorsement deals are the same ones that would be coming back after a spectacular year. So a player like Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields that would have been first-round selections the year before – you know, we're forcing them to come back for what? What else do they have to prove? The same thing is true here with Jamar Chase. So I believe college football would be better off if they allowed players to leave after their sophomore or redshirt freshman year. Now, as far as specifically involving LSU and losing all the talent, yeah, you know, it, it was it was a multitude. You know, you had the NFL record 14 players drafted. And then you had six undrafted free agents sign deals. So that's 20 key players. Then you have two other players that have opted out, you know, Jamar Chase and Kerry Vincent Jr. But on top of that, like you said, you lose Joe Brady. You lose Dave Veranda. Got a whole new coaching staff here. A whole new quarterback. But this is what's nuts about college football is that your schedule is just as important as your coaching and your talent. And if we have the schedule played out the way it's supposed to be played, LSU will not have to play two back-to-back -to -back top 15 recruiters, which is huge because what really gets teams in trouble is when they have to play two really difficult opponents back-to-back. Yeah, you've got a nice little light touch coming out of the gate in terms of SEC standards, taking on Mississippi State, Missouri, and Vandy. That's about as light as it can possibly get in conference play when talking the SEC, the best conference in college football. we got Carter Bryant on the line. You jump on over right here on YouTube to Power Hour. Check him out there. He works for Chat Sports covering LSU and college football. So no Brady, no Burrow, no Chase. Miles Brennan, not a whole lot of four stars that come into campus these days stick around till the end when they get beat out, then they get beat out again, then they get beat out again and still stick around. <laughs> but he did. So, you know, we, we could reduce his touchdown total from Burroughs by 20 and it would still be a heck of a year for Miles Brennan. So uh, what should, uh, for, for a guy that we've heard a lot about and keep hearing throughout spring practice and August drills year after year after year, but that's finally going to have uh, the offense to run. What can we expect from Miles Brennan? Well, he's, he's a really smart kid. You know, LSU was greatly benefited by Joe Burrow being the smartest guy in the field at all times. The difference is there's only a few things you can actually feel out with experience. Joe Burrow is not only the smartest QB on the field at all times, he could feel out if the pass rush was coming quickly. He could step up in the pocket like the Drew Brees and the Russell Wilsons of the world. And he could make those big time throws in tight windows. Miles Brennan can make those throws, but is he going to be mobile enough like Joe Burrow to, to just move around in the pocket? It doesn't take much market that you don't have to be Lamar Jackson to be a mobile quarterback. To me, Tom Brady is an extremely mobile quarterback because you know, we've seen it. We, we've seen him just take that little inch step up in the pocket to, to release the football. That's all LSU needs Miles Brennan to do. I mean, they got they even with Jamar Chase leaving, they 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 bring in a five star receiver in Kayshawn Boutte. Uh, they have Coy Moore. Uh, a lot of people are calling him the next Justin Jefferson. They have Trey Palmer from the year before. So, yeah, there's going to be growing pains. It's not going to be like last year with Joe, where Joe Burrow was the best quarterback in the SEC every single week. We'll never see that in college football history. So when you look at the schedule as a whole, Mark, LSU has six games where their ESPN win projection is 90% or better. So those are six wins that you unexcusably cannot lose. And like you mentioned, three coming straight out the gate. The big question can LSU split the games at Florida and then at Texas A&M, then at home against Alabama, and then on the road 
at Auburn. If you split those games, that's an eight and two season. And I think a lot of LSU fans, even the craziest diehards, we're going to go 10 and oh every year. Even those fans, Mark, would agree that eight and two after everything that LSU has lost would be a pretty daggum good year. So I agree with that. Difficult schedule playing in that conference, although it's a pretty light schedule for that conference, you still play in the, right. the best division and best conference uh, and line up all the teams that we just talked about. Uh, so you're telling me that um, that the SEC championship is not the aim, the goal, and would not be a disappointment in not repeating as conference champions? Yeah. So, for instance, I think most people would see that Alabama – especially now that Jamar Chase is gone. We can have a debate over how far does LSU drop off with Jamar Chase gone. But Alabama is probably the most talented team in the conference. So if they if they win the West and they come back and they beat LSU, so be it. But even Auburn, Auburn returns their quarterback and their two best receivers who are really daggum good. Um, and then you have Texas A&M. They return an experienced quarterback and a very must-win attitude now with Jimbo Fisher. And then Florida, you know, Dan Mullen has given LSU so many problems over the years, Mark. And they also return Kyle Trask, who I, I think is a little overvalued uh, right now. And then, of course, there is a possibility you lose one of these other six games. Now, you're not going to lose a Vandy. You're not going to lose a Mizzou. You're not going to lose on the road at Arkansas. But, you know, Mississippi State, South Carolina, you know, if Miles Brandon were to come out and just lay out a, a, a stinker, or, or Ole Miss the final week of the year, you know, if you lose one of those games, how will the fan base react? That, that'll that be the big thing right there. So, you know, if you go 6-0 against those teams and you split those other games against top 15 recruiters, I think most people would say Ed Orgerod did a really good job with this team. Well, I will say that I'm in the process of predicting every game in the SEC, so Ooh. I've – I've got everybody lined up and I've released all those videos, except I'm down to Auburn, LSU and Alabama. So obviously if the, the math has to work, um, so, you know, obviously you can't just be throwing out records. It has to mathematically make sense and work. Right. Uh, so with LSU, yeah, I'm probably eyeing something in that range looking at, okay, what's the probability versus uh, a slate of Florida, Alabama, Auburn, Texas A&M in that range to see, do they win three out of four, two out of four? Uh, but, you know, they could be one of the five best teams in the country and be eight and two to your right. point. Uh, you got to like the thought that uh, minus the Big Ten, most likely, and obviously minus the Pac-12, that it increases the chances of a second SEC team. And if the West is clearly, again, better than the East, then maybe that second team comes from the West and you sneak in the back door um, that way. Yeah, you know, here's what's fascinating. So obviously, you know, the Big Ten's trying to get their stuff together. We'll see what happens there. You know, in the ACC, I think North Carolina is obviously very undervalued. I like what they have a coach. I like what they have a quarterback. But Clemson's Clemson. I mean, they're so far ahead of everyone recruiting, talent, coaching quarterback running back so yeah i mean if the college football playoff is played the way it's supposed to be played lsu is very much in that college football playoff hunt but this is what's fascinating mark about this sport that we love so dearly okay that your listeners love so much is that our regular seasons matter each and every week matters so much and what makes that fascinating is that sometimes it's not as much who you play. It also comes down to when and where you play them. So, for instance, Alabama has more talent than Auburn, but LSU gets a bye week before Alabama. Now, Alabama also has a bye week before playing LSU. That's been the case every year since 2010. With that said, the Auburn game is also on the road. It is two weeks before the Bama game. It is before the, the, the bye week. LSU's got to play five straight weeks with this depleted roster, with 25 total key pieces from last year's roster. To play six straight weeks, and then in that sixth week, play Auburn at Jordan-Hare, even though Auburn is not on the same talent level maybe as Alabama, to me, that game is tougher 
because you're playing all those weeks in a row. So, you know, sometimes I think whenever we view college football, we tend to forget that it matters not just who's playing each other, but when exactly you play them. Good points by Carter Bryant. You can catch him right here on YouTube. Power Hour chat sports talking lsu talking college football uh anything else you kick around over there yeah man so it's weird i know all right here's what i like about you mark okay you're not only diehard college football but you got the background you got the helmets i saw way in the distance before you had your super cool camera angle with your nice hair gel man you got great hair mark i mean there's so many i mean god how, how do you not have a sponsorship deal for just for men yet yeah. just for men get on the line and get mark uh, a, a sponsorship deal so just for it. men is for graying hair correct am i yes not? and your hair your hair not yet not yet we're not going to reveal my age but you know i've been accused of that a few times on here they're like yeah you're dying your hair right <laughs> well, they're, see, they're, I, they're in there you just can't see them yet <laughs> but they're in there so I, you see, I had gray hair when I was twenty. That's why I wear this hat because I don't want to look old and you know I don't have enough money. Yeah, but I, I do. It. I do a sports collecting YouTube channel called Sports Gems, where I collect bobbleheads and weird sports items. This is like a very basic Funko Pop right here, Zion Williamson, and everyone loves sports collecting, right? So my my sports collecting channel is all about the joy of sports collecting. I want you to take a look at this, Mar. You were, you, uh, from what I watched, I know you're a big college football, but you also like old school college basketball. I got sure. this Shaquille O'Neal for five dollars off eBay. Yeah, and I know, I know, some of you old schoolers remember the headliners. So, you know, mm -hmm. I got this. I'll be, I'll be opening this on on an upcoming video pretty soon. So I do a thing called Sports Gems on YouTube. You can find it anywhere. Uh, Tiger Woods bobbleheads. Fernando Tatis bobbleheads, but uh, I I just got into football cards. I spent way too money on uh, way too much money on Joe Burrow cards lately, and my girlfriend's about to kick me out of my uh, of, out of our apartment. So um, that's why I was like, I was like, hey, I got to do this interview with Mark, and I'm not going to mention the sports collecting. So she's going to kill me whenever I walk into the living room here in a second. But I do it because I love it. And Mark, I appreciate you having me on today for real. Well, I got to tell you, Carter, I'm not going to be in good with the girlfriend after I make this statement, but if you're looking for any vintage NFL cards, uh, I, I haven't collected for years, but basically what I've got is from about 1975 to about 1990. Uh, uh, that's, uh. that's my collection of football cards. So if you're in the market, look at this old oh, John oh, Reagan's and no so, Theisman. So this is what's great, man. If you put out good content on YouTube, like you, you know, great, content creators just immediately converge whatever so there was someone that watched my sports gyms and they just sent me all these cards like i i don't know if any of these are even worth anything because i just got into cards and i pulled all these all pros i know we're running a little long here but the world needs to see this oh, so i love this stuff look at this and an all pro walter payton i know walter it's only payton. like two dollars sure. on on ebay whatever but i got jack ham we got mm -hmm. drew pearson Oh man, the Hall of Famer or should be Hall of Famer. We want to be a Hall of Famer. Today. You're up on this. I yeah. I, for, for a young guy, you're you're appreciating these old schoolers. You're you're in my era right there with those there guys. Go. And then we have HBCU great Ken Houston. So mm -hmm. you know it's it's um it, it's it's interesting, man. And and here's the thing I want people to 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 get out of this video and whatnot. If you watch my content, Power Hour LSU or whatever. It's all about community. It's all about energy, positive energy. I want sports collecting to be fun. I want LSU football discussion to be fun. And I had a lot of fun talking to you, Mark. You have so much passion for the game of college football, and you're open to all kinds of opinions. So uh, shout out to you. I was shocked whenever you hit up my DMs on Twitter, and you're like, hey, you want to cover my show? I was like, Wait, Mark, I've seen his stuff on YouTube, man. He's up there with some of the best college football YouTube creators. So I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that, uh, those kind of words. And as I told you before we started to record, you came highly, highly recommended. Because I'm not out there looking for people. I really oh. When people complain, hey, I need to see more Florida Gators coverage or whatever, 
then I'm like, okay, I'll go out there and get somebody. But uh, you came highly recommended by several people. Cool. That's great, so man. Good about that. Yeah. We appreciate the discussion. It's been a good time. And man, it does my heart good to see those old time <sighs> NFL football cards. Man, Beautiful. there's, they're so cool. It, when that nostalgia hits you, I mean, it, it's it's crazy. Like, uh, you see, my dad, but all the LSU football games I go to now are with my dad. And whenever you experience that with your father or your cousin or your college roommates, you know that that little bit of nostalgia. And you know, this is this is a big thing, Mark. Is that yeah? I'm excited that college football's back on the tube. UCA was just on. I mean, UCA was about where I close to where I grew up in Arkansas. Um, but all my family's from South Louisiana or whatever. But this is what's crazy. Obviously, it's fun that we're having college football back. But, and this is this is key, and I get emotional talking about this. It won't fully be back until we're back, until the band is back, until the tailgating's back. And to me, this is where, you know, I'm a little worried because college football, you know, the NFL is about stars. It's about cities. It's about coaches. What makes college football great and the reason why that you and I are talking together and the reason why we were so excited as students to go to games is that college football was about us. It's about us, the fan. It's a lot like EPL soccer, and I've covered EPL soccer. There's a certain nostalgia when you hear da, 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 or whatever your fight song may be. You know, the, the hairs just just raise off your skin. And to me, that's what makes college football great. That's why you have these people that have never went or stepped on a college campus who live in a completely different time zone, you'll see an LSU tattoo on the side of their leg just because they love the feeling of college football. So, yes, it is great that we're actually going to have some college football this year, but we need to be back into it, and that is when college football will fully be back. We have seen a difference in watching sports, the NBA, Major League Baseball, yeah. pick your sport by not having the energy of the crowd there and the, the noise and the atmosphere. But that is a tiny, minuscule slice compared to what it is at a <sighs> football game. The pageantry of the bands, the cheerleaders, right. the crowd, the mascots, the energy. It's a spectacle, and it's unlike anything else in American sports that probably rivals, uh, Europeans would argue, their soccer uh, events. Yeah. But that's what we have here in America is college football for that type of atmosphere and no other sports come close to it. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be great to see the guys back on the field popping pads and playing football. But that's going to be a huge part of it missing. Right. And, you know, I, I filled in for um, Mark Ryan, who's a Florida Gator, who's doing radio in Clemson or in South Carolina. And, you know, fan bases especially in the South, we're all the same. You know, I was doing, I, I thought Clemson fans would be slightly different, but they're, they're the same as LSU fans at, at heart. Um, same thing with South Carolina and whatnot. You know, we, we got to get it back. We, we've got to get it back. If not, you know, why not just watch NFL? NFL is, is to me TV football, which is great. I like the NFL, but I, I, I love Saturday night in Death Valley. I love Heck, I, I love going to games, even though they're terrible. I, I love going to campus to go watch the Arkansas Razorbacks play, uh, and and covering the Razorbacks for a few years. So, we'll 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 see. Obviously, you know this ten game schedule. We'll see how it plays out. So, it is what it is, Mark. You and I. Next time we see, or if we ever see each other, Mark, we're gonna hug each other and be like, "Oh my God, you remember that year we didn't have the fans? We've got to have the fans. I mean, that's why you and I have jobs. That's why you and I are able to do this stuff." Right. Is because of the fans. You guys matter, and that's what makes uh, the sport so fantastic. And Carter, for anybody out there that was possibly thinking that doesn't watch me on a regular basis, that that was just a random, typical throwaway comment about, oh, it's great to see the NFL cards that I don't live it, breathe it, and I'm not just a bit demented. Just this weekend, I was watching NFL playoff games on YouTube from 1975, 77, 79, Cowboys, Vikings, Cowboys, Rams. Yeah. Okay. Love the nostalgia. Love Oof. it. 
Yeah, that's great, man. That's great. Those old school NFL battles with Tom Landry. You know, the I I want Ed Orgeron to have the Landry hat this year. There what, must be synergy here, Carter. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you with this. Go ahead. Yeah. My 23 year old son. His name is Landry. No. Nah. <laughs> For that reason. That is great, man. Well, Jim Landry. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Um, I hope you and your family are are doing great. I love the once again before we got on there. I love the Kevin Falk Sports Illustrated iconic cover in the background. That made me that made me feel warm inside. It makes me feel great that Kevin Falk is in his first year uh, on the LSU coaching staff. That's surveying the background here. Yeah. Well, that that Kevin Falk Sports Illustrated background is my favorite SI cover. Uh, obviously, I'm extremely biased. Be, look at look at that. Oh yes, there he is, number three. Yeah, look yeah. at that. That is such an iconic SI background. And obviously, I'm a like I said, I do. I'm a sports collecting nerd. I I love that. So, Mark, I I, I appreciate it. If people want to come watch our YouTube stuff, I appreciate it. And, and if you do come from Mark's channel to watch my stuff, uh, come with an open mind. We have a lot of crazy commenters, and you know, just bring it. Just absolutely bring it. Mark, I appreciate you. And uh, and yeah, we'll talk soon, my friend. One of the best individual performances I ever saw in person at the collegiate level, on the field, on the sideline, covering LSU football against Mississippi State at Scott Field, was watching Kevin Falk circa 1997-98 uh, tear up Mississippi State when I was down covering the SEC uh, for about seven years. Carter, we appreciate it. Blessings, prosperity to you and yours, and we will see you soon. See you soon, Mark. We appreciate it.